all about perspective, guys. You know? You gotta have perspective on things. All right, all right. So, Keyshawn. Yes. Should the Jets feel good despite losing and being 0-1? You know how I am. I got perspective. I, it's 16 more games to go. We have the Tennessee Titans coming up. We know what we did that cost us against the San Francisco 49ers. We had subpar quarterback play, and mm -hmm. that's okay because he's coming off an Achilles. <laughs> our defensive front didn't didn't stop the rush. Mm -hmm. They was able to just run the ball down our throat. We got to make that adjustment. So I do feel good because we got 16 games to go. This is the start of the season. Our schedule right now is in our favor for the next four weeks. We go to Tennessee, we take care of business there, then we move on to the next one. But it's not like murderer's row as you look. Tennessee, New England, Denver, and then Minnesota. Mm -hmm. That's not murderer's row. We can get right back in. And even if we go down this stretch three and two, we still, we right there. Mm -hmm. We right there. So, yeah, I feel good. I feel good about it. Like Coach Robert Sala said, it feels good to have that quarterback underneath the center, okay, this year. Because when he wasn't, even though you was 1-0, it does not feel good. Yeah. Go ahead, Paul. I, I, what do you I, think? I, I don't know if they feel good despite 0-1. It's never a good feeling going into a week of practice and you're behind the eight ball. Now, yeah, you played against the San Francisco 49ers who probably are the standard, but they didn't show me anything that I could be optimistic about. They didn't stop the run. I didn't see much of a, a offense in the passing game or the running game. They got pushed all the way down the field all night long. Rodgers looked like he was a little brittle. And so, yeah, it's good to have him back, but it's hard for me to just be optimistic, even though Tennessee, now Tennessee should have beat, they should have won last week against the Bears. You easily could have, that game could have went either way. But just to feel good, it, it never feels good when you're on one going into week two, whereas this is not a gimme game because you're, you're on the road, one, and the following week, New England Patriots, well, the New England Patriots, they just beat Cincinnati. Who knows how they'll fare, fare the, this next week. But as far as them feeling good, no, nah, they're going to have to spend a lot of time on that field this week and in that film room to where they can see all the bad things they didn't do well. I, I do believe that he feels better after that loss than he did after the win last year. Absolutely, because your quarterback because was... Because he has Aaron Rodgers. Yes! Okay, so from that perspective, yes. from that very narrow perspective... Absolutely. ...he is telling the truth. Yes. I believe Robert Sala that he feels better today... Yeah. ...after that loss with Aaron Rodgers healthy than he did Aaron Rodgers out for the season, but they get the win in week one with Zach Wilson. I believe that. Do, do Should you... the Jets feel good despite the own one start, outside of me believing what Robert Sala said. Here's my issue with the Jets. Other than I'm a Miami Dolphin fan, go ahead. Okay, fine. But here's my issue, because I have questions. All off season, right? Like we knew Aaron was coming back. From the moment we knew Aaron wasn't retiring, he's coming back, he's gonna be back on the field. Forget this Achilles, forget 40. Yes. We're doing this forever, right? We're gonna run it back, get on board. We don't need Aaron to be MVP level Aaron, we just need we need Aaron from the last time he played football, yeah. right? 2022. You just need a, a stable quarterback. You just need a quarterback that can get the ball to the playmakers, right? Mm -hmm. That's it. We can build on that. But my question is, and we talked about this before yeah. with Robert Sala, the calling card for the Jets was supposed to be the defense. Right. So what happened? Right. Let's just take the offense out of it, right? Let's just put them over here. Yeah. All right. Well, the excuse machine has been fired. Boom, 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 boom. Yes. No preseason. Achilles. It's been some time since he played. Got to get on the same page with so, the teammates. It's week one. Offenses there. are usually behind. Okay, cool, cool, cool. All that. What happened with the defense, though? What was, what, how, what, I thought that was your thing. The, that's, I thought that's that was your bag. Out. Like, that's the thing, right? That's what they hang what happened out to the defense, though? Are you asking me? I'm asking somebody <laughs> because I don't understand how the Jets feel good it going, in, it going forward. It Here, here's what knowing I'm going to say. That the, offense, the, the offense getting on the same page, cool. So, okay, so here, here's what I'm going to say. Because I'm going to say preseason. I'm going to say tackling. I'm going to say training. I'm going to okay. say all that. But when you break down a statistical side of the game and you look at it, they did hold them out of the red zone, under the end zone a lot. They had they kicked five to six field goals, if my mind... Six. It, 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 Eight was six drives three. for scores. So, so if you Something think about like it, they, <laughs> they tightened up when they, when, they, when they got into the, the red or the green zone. They, got, they tightened it up a little bit. Mm -hmm. It's week one, Joy. 
It's week one. If you're telling me this in week five, you got me. But this week one. But okay, so well, that's all because we have. Because I can point to many teams. To react to, but I can point to many teams. Mason, Jordan Mason had an unbelievable game. They, they yeah, ran they the ball however they wanted to. Them. They didn't get any pressure on the quarterback. No, they did not. They have, so, so my question is, what, are, what, is, what is the Jets? What are the Jets? If, you, if the defense had a, had a bad game week one and the offense had a bad game week one. They don't have an identity one, right now. What is the Jets? You they got to figure those, out their identity. You fix those small little problems and you try to come back in week two and three with a new retooled mindset to not allow those things to happen. I just said to you, mm. if they allow Tony Pollard and company in Tennessee to do what Jordan Mason did to them in the 49ers, yeah. they're going to lose. They're in trouble. They're going to lose. And now we're going to have a different conversation because they're going to be 0-2. Now it's a different conversation. Robert Sala can't come back and say, well, I feel good because I got Aaron Rodgers. He can't come back and say that next week if they lose to Tennessee mm -hmm. because I'm not going to back him. You're correct about... A coach that's a head coach, a defensive coordinator, you got the job because you were supposed to be a defensive mind, a sure. master. And, and, they, and they've been and consistently they've been, and they've been. a good defensive team. But this is game one. No Hassan ready. Okay, you start to try to now, you, your mind in the offseason when you trade for somebody says, we're going to scheme certain things around this individual. All of a sudden, he ain't there. So now you got to regain plan, rethink things, put somebody in that, Otherwise, wouldn't right. even be in that position. Mm -hmm. So you got to look at all of those things opposed to just the defense is bad. What, what's wrong with them? The Jets don't have an identity. Well, I, I don't think they have an identity. Just, I think I thought their identity was that we were going to, like, Aaron might struggle, might be a little rusty, mm -hmm. but we have a defense to rely on right. as well. With the but defense that was, offense, you're going up against though. one of the brightest minds on the offensive side right. of the ball as I a coordinator in Shanahan. You see, when they got rid of, not rid of, when Chris McCaffrey had to go sit down and relax for a little bit, mm -hmm. they found another running back. Then they decided, although Debo Samuel didn't rush for a lot of yards, they was handing him the football. They was playing games with the New York Jets. They was doing the things, combating that defense that said, okay, we so, don't have so our main guy. We're going to change then? things up. So how can you feel good? Because you got the quarterback. Mm -hmm. You mm -hmm. got the quarterback. I don't care if he is 40 with an Achilles. Dude okay. can play. Yeah. He can play. Let's just let him knock some of the rust they off. Go I, on, if they go on two, no, it's a different conversation. <laughs> this season is so we're just it's a different conversation. Well, okay, so all right. Well, then I'll ask you this: Are you on or off the Jets bandwagon? Because Aaron Rodgers had a message for bandwagon fans saying, "Quote: If you want to jump off now, jump off. But then don't come back. Okay. All don't right. come around here no more. Have you ever, That's how you're on the bandwagon. I'm on the bandwagon like this. <laughs> Have you ever? <laughs> Have you ever rode public transportation? Yes, of course. So you got on the bus in public transportation and it was crowded, right? Yeah. And you sat in the front, stood in the front near, holding on to the thing near the driver. Yeah, yeah. That's where I'm at. Oh, okay. Because okay. when they go on two, they, they open up the door, I'm going to jump off. <laughs> I'm, <laughs> hey, I'm sitting on the bike ride. <laughs> yeah. I'm, I'm, I'm with them. The I'm with them, but if they go on two, I'm up there with the driver. I'm talking to him to see where the next stop is. The mm. next stop is in Tennessee. If they pass, then I'm going to sit down. So you don't have a seat in the middle. I, I, no, no, no. I'm yeah. not going to get stuck on you're the not, bus. You're not comfortable? No, I'm not getting stuck on the bus. Yeah, yeah. I am not at... I'm, I'm in the car next to the bus driving myself. You don't like the Jets, not, though, anyway. <laughs> I'm not on the bandwagon. It's not about liking the Jets. I'm not liking the Jets. Oh. I had a great year with the Jets. My oh, one no, bandwagon no. year It was an excellent year. They went to the AFC Championship game. It was a lovely time. Shout out to the New York Jets, J-E-T-S, Jets, they Jets, shake. Jets. That's but as far as being on the bandwagon, I just don't know what I'm on the bandwagon for. I'm on the bandwagon for Aaron Rodgers, who is going to be 41, coming off of an Achilles injury, and didn't do anything in week one other than one pass that really yeah, looked... Yeah, a couple some, passes. Oh, okay. I, I remember one really Aaron Rodgers-esque pass. Right? So they, they, had a, they had a nice drive. Yes. I'll give them that. They look like they're not even in the same, they're not even the same space. They're not even the same world as, as the I San understand. Francisco 49ers right now. And, the, and my issue is, if the aspirations for the Jets were just make the playoffs, which I think is... No, it's not. It's, I think that's is, what it is. is. Exactly what it should be. Not, if that's the aspiration that's for the is. Jets, I'm cool. I'm on the bandwagon for but that. It's not. But it's not. it's not. So when you come off of week one against a team that was just in the Super Bowl and that's yeah. how you look, yeah. you did your big list. And, but that, and we were but, talking but, to you about the let's Ravens. Be, let's be fair, though, y'all. Why we got to be fair? Because the 49ers are going to make a lot of teams look like that. That's because they are the ones that we should be They're talking gonna... about making Super Bowl runs. That's... Everybody can't be in this Super Bowl conversation. Right. This is New York, though. 
It's the Jets. I hear you. It's the 49ers. We he, get it. You said it's when New you York bring and Aaron it's the Rogers Jets. Over, this is what you, you, Super Bowl is what they think. Of course, 100%. You still feel that way. I don't play for them. <laughs> but I'm saying you're still confident that they I never make said they, I never said they're going to the Super Bowl. I'm trying to convey to you okay. and get you to understand that's their mindset. When you bring right. a guy over right. and you pay right. the money and you yeah. do what you did to get him when you could have had other quarterbacks, but you elected to allow those other quarterbacks to go to other places and you wanted an Aaron Rodgers, you, you allowed him to bring his own people you allowed him to, to basically hire the Nathaniel Hackett as the offensive coordinator who he was with in Green Bay that he was supposed to go with to Denver instead. Russell Wilson went there and he stayed in Green Bay. That's all I'm saying to you is that you don't pay a guy that type of money to make the playoffs. But you know Look, what they do? You know what they do? They pay people at major events to be seat fillers. Oh, so he a seat filler? Is that all? I'm just saying. <laughs> You know, but you're only there for a certain amount of time there, until somebody else come and sit down. <laughs> their expectations should be Super Bowl. I'm saying my expectations for them are not Super Bowl. I, I don't think mine is Super Bowl either. I think they might make the playoffs. What are the biggest, what's the biggest key to the Jets turning it around in week two? Well, let's not try to duplicate week one. If you, the quarterback, the guy we just talked about, can have a great week of practice this week, connect with the receivers and Mike Williams, get him involved, start to move Garrett Wilson around a little bit, give the football to Brees Hall a little bit more, um, play solid defense much better than you did, mm -hmm. that'll be a big turnaround for them. You can't lose regardless. They can't. They can't lose because what'll happen in New York is if you go 0-2, it's not going to sit well with the New York fan base, the New York media. Now, all of a sudden, you get all this negativity that comes within, comes into your locker room, and now everybody has doubt about if Robert Sala is the right guy. Did we make the wrong move going and paying for the quarterback? So you don't want that. You got to even the score and go 500. I think all the pieces are in place. I mean, before the season, you said, all right, they're going to have a top-tier defense. And so we asked, what, what do they need to do to turn it around? They need to change their mindset. To me, I saw a team that got bullied, they got ran over, versus a team that did pretty much anything they wanted to do. Don't do that now, to a lot I of people, Now, I think the though. talent is there, though, but the talent is supposed to be there. So you change your mindset. You look at that tape this week and say, this ain't supposed to be happening to us. Look who we got on the defensive side of the ball. Look, we, look who we got as our quarterback. Look, look what we put together this year to make a run. Change your mindset. Yeah, I understand. 49ers is, is the class, maybe. But the, so, the 49ers aren't the Super Bowl champs. They went to the Super Bowl, but they're not the champs. They got to change their mindset. I think they should give Hassan Reddick a call. That's they should have did if they, that. If they, they weren't doing that No, they should have did that when they was on uh, SFO uh, Tarmac <laughs> up in San Francisco. They should have been emailing his agent, telling him, hey, we land at 2 a.m., we'll get back to you. They should have been doing all of that. Make sure you get through to Hassan Reddick's agent. Yes. Outside of that, I think they need to establish the run game. They, they didn't really do anything to get super excited about to me. No. I, didn't, I didn't see anything that was like, thing. this is going to be their calling card. One. They well, didn't run the ball they well. They didn't stop the run. They weren't good more. in the trenches. Aaron didn't look great. There was the, the, their, their stars didn't shine. There was nothing about what, that performance from the Jets that I felt like you could build on. So, all right. Throw away the tape, watch the tape, Man, and then throw it away, that one under and, the and start over again. See, it wasn't that bad. It wasn't I mean, that it was that bad, but you you're not that. in the same. You know you're that. not in the same class as the team that you were you were just up against, and that's a team but that's really going but, for the but Super Bowl. And if that's what your aspirations. That's not going to be up against them. But your aspirations are to go there. So if your aspirations are to go to the Super Bowl, and that's how you look against a team that you would be playing against because they're in the NFC. I understand it's week one. Without their best it, it, offensive player. The Super Bowl is in like week <laughs> 21, okay? That's a, something like that, 21, 20 weeks, whatever it is. At the end of the day, it's week one. I hear you, Keith, but what did you just say? You just said that if they lose oh, yeah. against well, Tennessee, that's because it's week they two. are favored by three and a half that's week against, two. A, against a team that just threw it away yeah. literally yes, that is correct. to... The Bears yes. in Caleb Williams' first start, right? A, a game that they had locked up. So if, if the Jets lose, not just anyone, but to Tennessee, who they're favored against, they're and they start 0-2, all done. the negativity is going to creep in. And this is the consequence of expectations. Yeah, we're going to have a different conversation next Monday.
it'll be a different conversation. If they that, lose until the season, it's a different conversation. If they lose week two, they're done. They won't make the playoffs. Well, I'm not going to say that. I don't, I, I'm, I'm not, not going to say that. But you're off the bus. Yeah, I'm probably going <laughs> to see if I can get off and catch the next one. See, you know, I told you, I'm standing in the front, uh, holding gotta, on to that pole, and then when they stop, I might get off and just wait for the next bus because this one's too crowded. I, I, I want to wait and see if I can get a yeah, seat. Yeah, you it's, need it's some stuff for Yeah, I think everybody going to be emptying off if they lose me, too. That's There'll just, be a line be behind you. Stop. Subscribe here to get the latest from Speak, and go watch a few segments from our other shows on FS1.